Hello, my friends. Before we get into it, I want to thank everyone who subbed recently. Thanks to my previous Learn to Code video, this channel went through some pretty amazing growth this past week, and it's all thanks to you. I figure it's a good idea to make a follow-up video, not just to take advantage of the situation, although there is that, but also because, like my Mega Kids follow-up yesterday, a lot of new developments have happened on the topic. Like this. This was posted only a couple hours before recording this video. Vice Media to reorganize, lay off 10% of staff. You know, that exclusive tag right in the headline really makes me feel like the author of the article is hoping and praying that these layoffs are exclusive to Vice and won't be coming to his outlet too. The cuts, which will impact around 250 people, are part of new CEO Nancy DeBuck's strategic plan to tighten spending and achieve profitability. Oh, so Vice wasn't profitable. Who could have known with such quality reporting as this. Vice Media is planning a reorganization that will include laying off about 10% of its workforce, as the once high-flying startup looks to rein in an unwieldy business that grew quickly during the height of the digital boom. Well, digital markets are still growing, I'd say even still booming. So I don't think Vice's problem is the market. I think Vice's problem is Vice. One of the new CEO's first projects was setting a plan that would bring order to the chaos that was created during the years when Vice transformed from a Montreal punk magazine to a global media organization. Yeah, I know about third wave feminism's obsession with the zine format. It really does sound like Vice was doomed from the start. But today, it's Vice. Just like how it was BuzzFeed and HuffPo last week. And the brainlets over at Vice are having the same dumb reactions as the brainlets over at BuzzFeed and HuffPo. Here's Vice's social editor with, I cannot emphasize this enough, unionize your workplace. Followed up with, just to clarify, I don't know anything about myself yet, but appreciate everyone reaching out. Well, with a statement like that, if you weren't on the chopping block before, you are now. I'm not anti-union by any stretch of the imagination, but I do recognize that unions are going to cause more trouble, not less, in a failing business or disappearing market. These people don't get that, because their worldview is simplistic. Their bosses have a sum of money characterized as a lot, and they should be forced to fork it over in exchange for subpar writing. And that's that. Anonymous trolls tweeting in glee about vice layoffs are absolute cowards. And I'm not just talking about alt-right idiots. Your problems with this company and its executives should not be directed at low-level workers just trying to make a living. Oh, is that the new standard? That we shouldn't be laughing at people who get shit-canned after years of not only doing their jobs poorly, but using their positions to laugh at people themselves? Not just laugh, but harass people? Not just harass people, but attempt to get them fucking fired? They are workers who do not deserve this cruelty. No, on some level, this is the bed they made. I just want this point to be crystal clear. The journalists who, for the past decade, have weaponized their platforms in attempts to get others removed from their careers, projects, and positions for their political beliefs, are now calling foul because the average person, the pleb, is having a chuckle at them losing their jobs due to their political beliefs not being profitable. I'm okay with this. Here's a ridiculous conspiracy theory as to what learn to code actually means. The trolls are using learn to code as an outer narrative, a collectively agreed upon bad faith argument that is internally understood as such to provide cover for their true agenda. No, no, the truth is you're all unlikable assholes and people enjoy laughing at you when you fail. The everyman is always going to rejoice when the bully finally gets his comeuppance. Zoe Beery at Study Hall asked me why Learn to Code is such an effective meme. It's an ingenious cover story of highlighting journalistic softness with Learn to Code than expected cruelty underneath. They kind of beta tested this with a thing called the NPC meme that didn't catch on because it only made sense to gamers. They realized picking on journalists who recently lost their jobs, while knowing full well some of them are sending threats alongside it, has been an effective trolling strategy to make them feel twice the pain. Send threats. Send a pointless learn to code campaign on top as a cover story. Point to the cover story to make journalists appear soft. Well, let me state right now, if you're actually sending threats to journalists, don't do that. It's okay to laugh at them, it's not okay to threaten them. But I have a feeling that the journalists actually are soft, to the point that they're taking things that are clearly not threatening as threats. Here's an example. Parker Malloy here is actually taking this as a threat. It's threatening imagery, to use her own words. You would have to be a soft lefty journo to actually feel threatened by this. 
You can taunt journalists with learn to code all you want, but you can't run from the fact that if you switch jobs for six months, the journalists would be better coders than you would be at journalism. I don't know about this one, Caitlin. Coders might have an advantage in journalism because they will have learned the difference between true and false from day one, while a lot of journalists going into code still haven't figured it out. To all journalists being marauded, hold the line, don't give an inch to these trolls. Learn to code is a threat to silence journalists via violence. Really? Violence? When journos are spoon-fed back their own narrative, were journalists themselves being violent when they told minors to learn to code? Was CNN being violent when it published an article stating that they had the docs of Reddit user Han Asshole Solo and that they would publish it if he didn't delete and apologize for this gif of Trump disrespecting CNN? It's almost like these elitist fucks feel like they should have the monopoly on violence and not the state. The Twitter account Nazis Not Welcome decided to tweet out, We will not tolerate your fascist attacks on the press. Not for a minute. Stop attacking journalists immediately. Yep, making fun of shitty people losing their jobs after years of hurling abuse is fascism now. I am not surprised that an Antifa commie, somebody who wants everyone and everything to be equalized and redistributed, would take great offense at the laughter of the common people finding joy in a tyrant's fall. In any case, the learn to code meme took off hard, despite the best efforts of the radical left, so Twitter staff decided to make the phrase learn to code hate speech. Yes, really. I am told by a person in the know that tweeting learn to code at any recently laid off journalist will be treated as abusive behavior and is a violation of Twitter's terms of service. I swear to god lefty journals are made of fucking play-doh. Of course, even Twitter realized how retarded that sounds because they issued a clarification. It's more nuanced than what you reported. Twitter is responding to a targeted harassment campaign against specific individuals, a policy that's long been against Twitter rules. Oh, okay, okay, I get it. Fine, a targeted harassment campaign against specific individuals. Like all the SJWs threatening and doxing the MAGA kids from Covington Catholic High School last week, right? That seems to be a targeted harassment campaign against specific individuals. When are they getting their bans, Jack? Or is that one just not important enough? Does that have to go on the back burner because latte-sipping communist activists calling themselves journalists are taking some flack on the internet? Twitter meltdowns are fun and all, but let's turn our attention to the core of the matter. Yes, Vice's CEO has stated that the layoffs will touch all departments at every level, which means saying goodbye to some colleagues. But who exactly is going to get fired? As of this recording, I don't know. Maybe by the time the video's out, names will be floating around. But let me make a prediction. I think Vice is going to follow the lead of BuzzFeed and lay off primarily people of color and LGBT employees. Huh, funny how that works. Among these minority ethnic and LGBTQ former staff are some well-known figures within Asian American communities. These writers and producers have frequently created content on race, culture, mental health, and issues facing the LGBTQ community. Well, maybe that's why they were laid off. Their work was overwhelmingly devoid of value and was the exact type of thing that BuzzFeed was crumbling under the weight of. Maybe it's because they were diversity hires with lesser qualifications, experience, or quality. And when it came time to trim the fat, the least talented people had to go regardless of skin color. Maybe it's because BuzzFeed decided to let go of the people producing the most politically agitating content, the blame white men for everything garbage, and it just happened to be that minorities were putting out most of that junk. In other words, if you're not hired for your competence, expect to get fired for your incompetence. These people talk about racism and sexism as if they're moral paragons. The honest truth is, they've simply substituted one form of bigotry for another. They still have a very robust in-group preference. The difference is, their in-group is not my race or my nationality, it's fellow journalists and fellow radical lefties. It's not even the working class or the poor as they like to claim it is. Their reactions to workers affected by America's dying industries proves that. When it was coal miners, it was learn to code. When it was journalists, capitalism is evil and democracy is crumbling. It's not hard to figure out who they actually care for. There's still one final lingering question though. Why is this all happening now? Why are all these people getting laid off within days of each other from a bunch of different progressive outlets? Well, back in March of 2016, the Countering Foreign Propaganda and Disinformation Act was written. 
It hit the table in May 2016, made it through the House vote on December 2nd, 2016, and the Senate vote on December 8th. President Obama signed it into law on December 23rd as a part of 2017's National Defense Authorization Act. The Countering Foreign Propaganda and Disinformation Act set aside $160 million for use in countering foreign propaganda. Ron Portman, one of the senators that helped write the act, stated that our enemies are using foreign propaganda and disinformation against us and our allies. And so far, the U.S. government has been asleep at the wheel. But today, the United States has taken a critical step towards confronting the extensive and destabilizing foreign propaganda and disinformation operations being waged against us by our enemies overseas. The act outlines two priorities. The first is countering foreign propaganda, and it explicitly names Russia and China, as well as various non-state actors, as the act's targets. The second priority, though, establishes a fund to help train local journalists and provides grants and contracts to non-government organizations, civil society organizations, think tanks, private sector companies, media organizations, and other experts outside the U.S. government with experience in identifying and analyzing the latest trends in foreign government disinformation techniques. The act expired exactly two years later, December 23rd, 2018. Within a month of that date, multiple radical progressive news organizations, from BuzzFeed to HuffPo to Vice, began implementing layoffs and cutbacks, citing a lack of funding and a need to downsize as the reasoning. Yeah, you heard all of that right. I think what happened here, and this is just my guess, is that the Obama administration decided to empower radical progressives within the media in order to push a cultural, social, and political narrative, with the now overused excuse of Russian interference. And when the money finally ran out, those same activists that were brought on to turn the media into an absolute nightmare circus of incompetence and mouth-frothing ignorance back in 2016 were finally shown the door. Let's hope that this event finally signals the death of the media's cult-like behavior now that all of these laughing stocks have been cast out into the streets, into the cold, harsh reality that the people they claim to advocate for know all too well. But hey, it's not all bad. You people think there's a massive gender and race disparity in tech, right? Well, now's your chance to correct it. Learn to code. Let's say you spent 30 years making a solid middle class living in a paper mill in northern New Hampshire. Then one day the mill shuts down, sold for scrap to China. Happened a lot, but no problem. Just learn to code. Everyone in Brooklyn's doing it. Well, coding was never a real solution to any of this, obviously, but it had the effect of making journalists feel even more self-satisfied. And of course, that was the point. It's always the point, actually. Fast forward to this month. Someone on Twitter came up with a pretty brilliant piece of advice for all those laid off journalists trying to figure out what to do with their lives. Learn to code. Perfect.